Okay, so you're telling me the company had a movie camera? Yeah, had one. That was eight millimeter, you know. No big deal, and that's before color, you know. And we, I'd take that camera and the, the men's club out there, that, that was another building that furnished to, to the men. No charge. You had a men's club in there. You, you met once a month or something. You ate there. You partied there and all. And we'd go once a year, we would go down to Florida and go fishing. Now, all the members of the men's club, free. And we'd pay the housing. The club would, now not the bill. The club would pay for their housing, to pay for their food, to pay for the fishing. And I've taken as much as three Greyhound buses full of the men down there. We go down there and stay. Panama City, is that right? Down at, uh, down at Jacksonville, down at Jacksonville. And we fished out of there in around Mayport. You familiar with that area? No, no. <clears throat> And we've, we've had a wonderful time. We'd go out down there, because if a fellow wanted to take a drink, that was, you're free. You were away from the community to take a drink. And I've taken some, some pictures I had to suppress I think I finally threw away where a man was messing around with, talking to one of the ladies at the beach or something, you know, like that. But we took pictures, and not all of them like that. I mean, good ones where they were enjoying themselves. We had a good time. Did you take pictures of children with that movie camera? Oh, yeah, we took pictures of children. They'd have a, every, every, after, every year after Christmas, we'd have a doll party for all the girls, and, of that boys, of that, well, it was all girls girls of that age, and I've taken a many a picture of the little old things, you know, including my daughter. Tell you an interesting thing about her, she mentioned about the skating ring, there's an oval-shaped skating area, and they, the editor came out to the paper and wanted to dedicate it, I had to take some pictures of the dedication of the thing, and uh, so after they had all the ceremony, it says, the editor said, why don't you go ahead with skating? And I said, all right, now we'll see about uh, selecting who's going to make the first round. And of course, my daughter was standing there, said, Daddy's going to put me the first one to take a picture, being the first one to skate on it. And I picked out one of the workers. Child, she went home crying. She was heart was broken. She was maybe seven, eight years old, just a little girl, you know. And her mother, got a mother upset. She wanted to give me hell, you know, about it. I said, no, I said, you've got all the advantages as it is, Marjorie. Well, let's let one of the others. And of course, Marjorie was, was into all the clubs with all the girls and all. But uh, we showed it both ways, uh, the blacks and the whites that way. Did the blacks live in, uh, in the town no, that worked there? No, no blacks lived in the community. It was all a white community. What happened with these movies? We, we would show them at meetings, you know, uh, but if anything that could get in trouble, we wouldn't show that. If we showing a man flirting with a woman, certainly I wouldn't show those pictures to people. And they were not, they are men, just like men are, Judy. I mean, some are good and some are bad manners. Do you have any of these, um, do you still have the movies? No, I gave all of them away. I wonder if when, it, when I left the see, I worked so many years after I left Payne City and other communities. And there's, Who'd you give the movies to? I've even forgotten. Maybe some around there, but I don't know. From the house. Did you think they had the movie camera in the 30s, too? Oh, yeah, we had the movie camera in the 30s. Now, let's see. First I time I ran across it, though, I, it was, I didn't go to Payne City to 45, so it was around 45 when they had the movie camera. Eight millimeter. But they probably, you think they had... You I, don't, I don't say all the other communities had it. Right. But I say we had one. And somebody else in the bill wanted to borrow one. They called, how about let me use the camera for so-and-so. And we pretty well, it was based in our community. They called me and sent whoever wanted it in the maker community. Now, that, you didn't transfer it to Porterdale, Columbus, or Taylor Mill, or any of that. Reynolds, George, all that. Um, yes, sir. Do you think that they, uh, so this was, this was in the city right here, the Payne City, that they had this camera? Yeah, we had one there. Yeah, but I don't, I don't even know what happened to it now. Of course, color came in and everything after color came in, it was obsolete to have a black and white camera. Oh, no, if you put color film in it, it would shoot black what? color film. If you put color film in it, the camera would shoot color film. I don't, I don't know about that. You could be right. Um, 
What happened to all the old bib recorders and, and all that stuff? The, the bib may have files of it somehow. Uh, see, the bib, the bib is no longer under that management that it was under, and I don't know. But we had a good time, Judy. We had, we, we were outside the city, and I told you about all the parties we had. What we did in our clubhouse room, we put some slot machines in there. You know, the regular kind you play with. I mean, legal. Yeah. And all the money that was made from it went to the club. And this Miss Brickle, Hazel Brickle, she was our bookkeeper. She kept up with all the money, and the, and any money spent had to be signed by the the president of the club and me so that we would be sure nobody would be getting money that wasn't, wasn't supposed to be. And it was an honest up and she kept the books entirely. She knew everything about it. You'll like that little lady. She's a quiet type person, but you'll like her, Hazel Brickle. And now this, uh, this other Mabel Lee Parks, she's an outgoing type person. She's a... She's a sweet thing, both of them. Well, listen, thank you very, very much. Okay. Now you want me to put you on your way? Um, well, if it's possible, maybe I'll call one of them up and see if I could come visiting to them. Well, I didn't, oh, you, you want to call anybody maybe, here? Yeah, maybe I could call Mabel. Of course, sure. Go on, yeah. But, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the first one if you'll do it. Now, we won't eat till about 5 because we got this... Uh, College student, that's uh, the ladies up there in Athens are real nice, and he's visiting the ladies up there, and he'll come home about five o'clock this afternoon. We delay in the meal to I meal see. to eat with him, you know. He's a fine boy too. Oh, this is your oldest grandson. That older, grandson. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you'll like it? Is there anything that you didn't that I haven't asked you, or you haven't told me that you want to tell me? Dude, I can't think of a thing. I, always, uh, I said two or three times, I have no regrets. I think our people were the best there was, and I tried to treat them that way. And I knew exactly what they'd been through because they came through the same thing myself. Now, my grandson tried to say something about pulling trolley cars, cable off a of trolley cars. That's when I was a boy. And... Uh, you got this, this thing off? No, sorry, don't. You want me to turn it off? No, it doesn't matter. So uh, we were talking about they had an overhead trolley, you know, the drive was on the power, and we'd come right between the mill and the village, and the boy that's running the Finch's barbecue in uh, Macon, big, he's got a big plate. He and I would pull that trolley, that pull the rope, and he'd pull the thing off, and the car would stop, you know and talking about all of them trying to catch us and all that kind of stuff, what he was talking about. But we were boys. We did the usual things that boys did, what supposed to do. Um, this is off the track, but if people did want to change their shift... Change their what? Their shift, their working hours. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. How did they go about doing that? They asked the overseer, could they get... Of course, everybody wanted the first. And you can't have everybody do it. You go run three shifts. You go have to have three crews. And there's somebody with the longest service on the second or third shift want to go to the first. But first, if it had not only be a person on the first shift, but it had to be a particular operator, like a speller, a person running the spinning machines. On the second or third, a job came open. She had the seniority over the other one. They transfer you into it. Usually, rule they went to route from third to the second and then to the first. But I always, I always went to work. I told you at seven o'clock in the morning, so I could see the people coming out. If anybody had anything on their mind, chip on the shoulder, come to me with it. So you and were I, the person they always came to. Huh? You were the person that they came to. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. There was only one. You, there was only one. Oh, superintendent for each company, for each, each mill, each location, yeah, uh-huh, uh -huh. that's right. And then you had a general superintendent over them, and the general superintendent was over, we had a general superintendent over the manufacturer in all the mills, and he was in the general office across the river from here. 
And the highest man that stayed in the community was the superintendent. That's and you. Uh, yeah, in this particular case. But uh, I told you now, when I left Columbus, some of the superintendents would buy homes and move out. Uh, maybe social conscious or something, I don't know what, but it didn't worry me. I have no regrets about the bill. And I'm sure you can find isolated cases where people didn't agree with my judgment or any of the other people, but consciously we tried to make it a good, good working place with as good a conditions as we could. And I tried to improve what I could. It sounds like you did improve a lot. Well, I tried. I tried. And we were interested. We were interested in people. They were people we were living with and working with. So the company owned all the housing, right? In Macon, yes. Had, in, in, in Payne City? In Payne City. The company owned all of it. It was an incorporated city. It was not in the city of Macon. It was incorporated. In other words, they have their own elections to elect for the officials of the, of the city. And now, of course, the Bibb sold houses years ago, and uh, they were individually owned by the workers or somebody else who wanted to buy it. Did they have their own fire department? Uh, at the time I got there, they had a sort of a volunteer fire department, but it was inadequate. And uh, we had an agreement. We had a fire call the city fire department, and they would come and put out their fire. What about the police? Police we had the village man, he was a police, they kept order. And Hazel Brickle, I'll tell you about, her father was the one all the time I was there. Was he wasn't the village man, he was he was an electrician for the company. But he helped look after it. it speeding through it, you can't now, you go there now, you go too fast in Paint City, they'll lock you up or they'll give you a ticket. And after I left the company, I remember an old friend of mine called me and said, Grady says you know, my grandson drove down into Payne City and said the police there caught him for speeding and said, can't you help me? I said, well, I've been gone, you know, for, I say, from 10 or 15 years, but I'll ask and see if anybody could help him, and we got him helped. Uh, that, that's what they do. They keep a good community. In other words, you can't go in there. Are you drunk? They'll lock you up. But no the other communities like that. The Payne City is all together different. Now, who was um, the, the chief of police at the time in 34? At uh, what time? In the 30s. Was it the same person? The whole I time? think Tom Cobb probably was. Ask Hazel. She, I, he might have been given some pay for being policeman, but he was the chief electrician for the mill. Fine fella. That's Hazel's daddy. Hazel. And there was a mayor of the town also? Yeah, mm-hmm, mayor. He headed up the, the meetings with his committees, you know, council members. Is that what the mayor did? He was mayor full time? Or did he work in the mill also? Oh, he worked in the mill also. Well, la I remember the mayor, the last few years, he was working for the First National Bank, L.M. Dukes. You had that name called? No, he, he was the mayor for a long while. The first one, I remember when I, right after I got there, George uh, Crutchfield was the mayor. But uh, it wasn't too much maying done. He headed up the council meeting, you know. If anything wasn't right, everybody had a gripe. They could come, you know, about the community. Just like I said, that one of the ladies always reminded me, said, you know, I never will forget when my husband was getting drunk, you didn't make us move. I said, no. I said, I thought she needed so-and-so. And tried to be compassionate, you know. But we had a good community. I don't believe you'll find many people that will criticize it. And how many you have, how many have you actually talked to other than me? Um, well, I just got here yesterday. Oh, so uh, you haven't talked to anybody? Yeah, I, three people. Uh, who were they? Well, Mr. Whitlock uh -huh. and Mr. DeVoe. Now, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Whitlock it was mayor too at times. Yes. Yeah, he, said, well, he said he was chief of police. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, he, that's a nice fella. Well, listen, thank you very, very much. Okay.
Did you want to talk to you? Come by us. Most people off from the north uh, come down here and think we're sitting, we're working people with bull whips and all that kind of stuff. That's not true. Substandard in pay? Yes, probably so. Probably substandard up north. What? Was it always substandard? Or oh, when the when the uh, law came in, you know, you had a minimum wage and minimum hours and all that kind of thing, and, and uh, the companies abided by it. You didn't. I never remember a case made against the company for not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, were there other industries in town? Other than yes, the yeah, there's two other textile mills, Willingham Cotton Mill and the uh, Atlantic Mill. Were they different from... Oh, yeah, another one. There was a, we had one out there by Payne City. Uh, there's a northern company had it. Uh, Macon Textile is the name of it. It's uh, maybe a half mile from Bibb. It's closed down. The main industry in this town was what? Maybe textiles is, is uh, 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 the largest number of workers in the one industry, I think, was textiles. Why do you say textile? I don't know why I say textile. I don't know why I say textile. Textile. <laughs> textile. That's southern. Textile. I'll yeah. learn. I'll learn. It's only been two weeks. <laughs> and Judy, you've got the northern bow to a fairly well. You just as you just as northern talking as you can be. I had trouble because I have a loss of hearing too. I always said I was married so long, I, my hearing's about to leave me. You, oh, you think it has something to do with your marriage? Yeah. Uh, my wife was vocal, but she was a good Where wife. did you get your labor supply from? Usually from other workers. They bring them in. Yeah, they say uh, I got so and so that uh, would like to come work, get away from the farm or wherever they were. And you say, well, if you need somebody, come on, tell them to take the physical examination and be uh, employed. We'll see about giving giving them some work. Do, do people ever buy jobs? I heard Not that I've ever heard. I've never I've never heard that about anybody doing that. And you see, I told you that Mr. Pittman was employed just to be sure any irregularities were, di were, were discontinued. And our company was a good company. Didn't pay as much as the steel mills up north or the automobile factory. But they had the, the, text, the uh, automobile industry. They had a problem and they still got a problem. What happened when people wanted more money? What is that? What happened when people wanted more money? They got a job somewhere else they wanted to go. I mean, we had no way of holding them. Uh, yeah. Did they, what if they wanted a, an increase from the mill? If they, you mean on the particular job for them individually? Well, yeah. Well, uh, you take, as far as uh, most of the things were paid by the hour, a big part of them. Others were paid by the amount of work they did. They had, on the machines, they had a clock, like you'd have a speedometer to put your, your old meter. What did you keep. call that? Call. Is there a name for that? Oh, a Hank clock. What is a Hank? A you Hank. tell me. What a Hank is? Yeah. I think it's a part of a machine. It goes around. No, let me tell you what a Hank. Hank is 840 yards. Oh, okay. 840 yards. Uh -huh. And so the, each machine, in most of the cases, had a, a Hank clock on that. It said how many, how many times that machine was run. And then they'd be paid on that, bearing in mind that the minimum, you had to be so at, the, at, at least as high as the floor, but anything above it, it was permissible. But they also had a methods of standard department that went in and saw what the, how much should be achieved in an hour. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. They set the rate up. Um, an ex a person that would come and look over their shoulder? Would no, they, they would study them. They'd take it for every minute they were doing the job. What was they doing, this, that, and the other. That's the way they're doing the steel mills and the others. They set them up 
through a Methodist state. Well, a lot of people call it the efficiency department. You ever heard of that? Yeah, I've heard of an efficiency expert. Well, that's what that's what it used to be, but now it's more methods and standards. In other words, you may be working just as hard, but you're not producing as much because the, the clock shows what you were doing. And the ladies that were putting the yarn from a large container to a small one to go to customers, they, they'd be paid by the pound, pound of yarn. Understand? Yes, sir. How did that relate to the Blue Eagle? Well, because when the Blue Eagle came in, certainly it raised the wages. And just certainly when the, if the wage and hour law is the same thing, and I've forgotten, it, it, it meant, it didn't mean you couldn't work people uh, make an extra shift. You want to work an extra shift and there's somebody out, you could work that. And you were paid time and half time for it. Um, but how did um, um, more money per hour well, Less it's, hours well to just like I told production. you, so like I told you, I, I was doing things feeding cotton into the beginning process. Yeah. Well, I worked up to get more money and do it. I had to go where you had some responsibility plus the the uh, expertise to set that machine up in a thousands of an inch. And you know, the thousands of an inch is not very much. And that's what we did. You get more money for that than you would be throwing that cotton into the container, the hopper. We call it a hopper. But um, when the NRA came in and people were getting all of a sudden more money and less hours, right? Yeah, yeah. Did, I have two questions about that. Did that change the way that people worked? Well, they started go working eight hours instead of ten and with more money. It was another... Uh, inflation, you still, you work less, you got, you got about the same pay. And it's just another way of inflating the money. But it was to the worker's advantage, I don't mean it wasn't. Did it, did, did it change um, how much they were supposed to produce? No, you, no, the rate would be raised up on what you're doing to achieve what you were doing maybe in 10 hours, you know. There's always an incentive over the, the minimum. So they had to work faster in less amount of time. I like to say more efficiently, which one is, may be the same thing. Yeah. You know, you can you can work, Judah. You can sit down when you get to it and let it go. Go to the restroom and stay there if you want to. But you you are you got certain duties you got to do on any job. As a, even as a college professor, he's got because he's a little more lenient, I think. And, because some of them are so liberal that it's pitiful. You're still young and you don't, you don't look a, at the liberal person with any scrutiny. I, um. you know, I, had, I majored in economics at school and I had a teacher that was so warped. He was a peculiar fellow, smart as he could be, but he, uh, he was one of these liberals. He'd, he'd say, he'd say uh, he wouldn't buy a General Motors automobile <clears throat> because they mistreated the workers, they did this, they did that. Now that's way back yonder, yeah, and he wouldn't shave with uh, anything except a, a razor so made by the English. Uh, I bought one of them because he told me how good they were, you know. And it just, another thing you do, Judy, you're an old college student. You, he, would, he, would, he would go come in there and you had one book that you had to study, a textbook. And then he had a, another book that he lectured on and the thing. And then on Friday, you were, he didn't have a class as such, but he went in his adjoining office and one at the time would come in there. Maybe you wouldn't get it, but it may take three weeks to get around to all of it. But you sit across the table and he'd say, Mr. Morgan, what do you think about so-and-so? And then you, and he's talking about something you'd studied during that week and you're supposed to know. And of course, uh, we got to be quite friendly. And uh, I got where I learned the thing to do to this. So when you went into the office there, instead of waiting for him to ask you a question, you, you ask him one yourself. 
and let him talk to you. And we've got to be good friends on that. I got by with it too for a long time. People are different, as you know, even you northerners. That's right. We're all not alike. It's true. It's true. You made a point before. You said the southerners, southerners, they don't like. They like the individual. They don't like the group. They like the individuals, yes. They like the individual, they don't like the group. That's what we've been accused of, and that's, that's, that's mainly, I'm talking about racially. You, you're blacks in general, or Negroes, whatever you want to call it, they are, they are some of them just as good as anybody. And there's some sorry whites and there's sorry blacks. I say not all whites are good people and not all blacks are bad people. That's my theory. Do, how did, do you think that also related to organized labor, the individual versus the group? I've never worked on those conditions. I've, I've known a lot of them, and the union can go to an extreme just like the management can. I've seen, well, I'll give you an idea. Uh, uh, I don't want to say anything to interfere with it, but I'll tell you this. Say my grandson, uh, when he uh, got through with school, he got a job with a local business here in Macon. And he goes, hey, sure. He, he goes out and does work <coughs> from the company. And he's given a, a, a job that should last so many hours, but you've got to see, go to each individual house. And if he gets through two hours early, they still pay him for the, for the eight hours that he should do. Now, Texas, I don't know of anybody that does that. It's, it's better run. Watch him out, my little dog. We're going to wash you today, boy. Get that old stuff off of you. See, the textiles is better run than that. I think it's probably more efficiently run, and because they, and they, they have more of the facilities, the textile plant, that you could control a mass number of people. I think okay. the textile chart gets the work out of the people, and I enjoyed it. I tell you, I never have been pushed in textile. I worked up as a worker, like in the twisting department, where more than one strand is twisted together, and you've got to take and pick up those spools and push them on pegs, pins that are sticking out, and it's it's an odd and be able a little small hole in the end to go into that that thing, and you finally learn to. To do it, I know uh, they transferred me in there, no air conditioning, and I got hot as I could be doing it. But before the oil was over, the mill was air conditioned. Back in those days, some jobs were hard. Feeding that cotton was hard. That was considered a black man's job. But I did it. It's the technical industry is all right, though, you know. Now the. You may say the pay is different for a supervisor than somebody else. It is. But I'll tell you this to give you an idea. I worked for my company for 39 years, and in the later years we got retirement into the company. And the, uh, it was based, you started off with, and the company made up the difference before it came in and got you up there. But I worked there 39 years, and then I retired and went to work out the base and worked for them for almost 12 years. I get more retirement from the government than I do from a company I worked for for 39 years. 39 versus 12. You'd say you ought to have gotten three times as much. That old boy, he's... Did, did the workers get retirement too? Yeah, they get retirement. I'll say it. Well, i give you an idea of the amount though. I worked for 39 years and I get more for working 12 for the government. I'm, all, I'm, a surpri I'm surprised that, um, that, that, that there wasn't more violence the way you're describing it in 34 because it seems like there was violence all from, over. From the war, but not in mine. I know uh, we, did, we just didn't have it. We didn't have violence. But I'll tell you this, if any ever happens, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll be with the 
the discontent. That's that's the one you have trouble with. That's what that boy lacks. That Nintendo. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. Right. I think they got every one that's ever been made. So the, I, the idea in the, in the community was to keep people happy. I think it's in, anywhere. You keep people satisfied with the work. They'll stay with you longer. And the experienced operator is better than the beginner or the novice. So the community that you, the big community, the Payne City, mm -hmm. would you say that that kept people real satisfied? I think so. You ask the people. I, Certainly, all the names you have should be pro-management because that'd be the one that I would think the most of. So, you may say, "Well, you you are biased, and your workers are biased." And we may be to an extent, but all they can do is tell you what happened to them, whether they were this or that. And, I, and all the names you named, I think they they go be pro-management, not because they have to, but because they feel that way. There's a, there's a close affinity to the people that have worked there. What he is, I think, he, I think he's allergic to a lot of stuff. And we washed him yesterday and then we sprayed some stuff on him and time it hit him, he smelled it. He just almost froze and trying to get away. And I was holding on to him and I feel so bad that, that we gave him, got him allergic to it. You know, due to these special, what's the word for it? Well, you get a but you breed to Pure fur, huh? Well, and he, uh, and he, with getting one thing, sometimes you hurt on another. You know, develop this yeah. particular characteristic, and I think that's what it. I believe he's he's allergic to so many things from being close bred. Sweet little old fellow, though. <laughs> How much did, did they get time off for lunch? The no, well, they were able to go just leave the machinery long enough to go eat. <coughs> I'll tell you about that, uh, that that black lady that worked for me. She says, uh, the black lady, you had a restroom and an adjoining room before you go into the restroom area, and they'd get the head seats out, and they'd sit down and eat the lunch. And she's telling me about how nasty the white people, white ladies were, were throwing their food uh, containers, throwing them in, on the floor instead of in the trash can that was in there. So, Mr. Morgan, if people were discontent? I'm sure, it's a, you'll always find discontented people. I mean, that's... What was their, what were their options? What was their what? Their options. Well, either, either work for the company or go somewhere else. You had a standard that they were supposed to do, and if they can't do it, it'd be better for them to go somewhere else and do what they want to. But they were they were certain of having work to do. They were, I, I don't have any apology for for the company because I knew them. I knew the workers intimately. I knew the I knew all the the children. See them. I recognize them because they were in clubs, picnics. We had had a big company picnic every summer. We'd run a place like. You don't know it, the lakeside and recreation is a big place. People swarm and have, go swimming, and they would have, a, would have a big lunch, you know, and all the kids and all the parents didn't have to belong to a club. You just came out, and we had a good time. I wish I had those pictures I could show you that I'd given away. You'll probably see one of some of these ladies. may have some of them. You go around ask them. <clears throat> I've seen little old girls develop into beautiful, beautiful girls. Um, when the when the when the when the when, the, when production wasn't up, right? when they were, when the company wasn't making much money. What? If the company, if production was down for the company, what I mean, is that when you went on? That's when there was halftime. That's when the. That's when the mill closed down for periods of time? My mill never closed down. But sometimes people worked three days instead of five days. Some, some did, yeah. Now, yeah, they did to that extent. During, I think particularly the summer months, there would be maybe a curtailment of, 
of needs. You know, where people didn't want to buy it. And just like uh, the papers are telling you now, there's a recession on now. You may not have felt it, but you go feel it before it's over. But our people got along, I'll tell you that. One of them was sick, there's somebody there to stay with you with your, with your sickness where you wouldn't be just confined 24 hours a day. It, it, was, a, it was just a close-knit community. You say, well, that's all for the company's benefit. It, it was, it was benefit to the company, but it also gave the worker some form of security, knowing she had friends, or he had friends around her. And they all belonged to this or that church, you know, like most of the people over there are probably Baptists in Payne City. A lot of them messed this. Did, the comp did, the, did, the, did Bib provide a church for them? Not in Macon, they didn't, but they did. Uh, they do in the other communities, but it's not owned by the company. They, the company would give them the land. They build them a church. Columbus, that's what we had in Portville. How about in Payne City? Payne City, there's no, and they would go up to the Bellevue Baptist Church, which is about a half a mile from Payne City. Most of them would walk. A lot of them don't now, of course. Did they have to go to church? Did the company make sure they went to church? Did the, church, did the company do what? Did the company make, make sure that they went to church? Uh, no, the Bib didn't try to regulate any religion. That was up to them. They, we had a wall of holiness, people. You know what? Hol uh, holiness? Holiness? Holiness, yeah. Uh, you know what the... Uh, wall of holiness. Huh? Did you say a wall of holiness? No, uh, no I don't understand. I don't understand what you're saying. What did you just say? I said a holiness church, and holiness church is, uh, you know what Jehovah Witnesses are? Well, it was that type thing, then. And... What are you looking at me like that for, little boy? He's looking right at me, Cole. But uh, the bib, bib didn't regulate anybody went where they wanted to, and quite often if the church needed something, they'd ask what from the company. And, well, maybe I'll tell you this about it. The, the bib company had a, and all the mills, had a, a commissary or drink stand or whatever you want to call it. You went up the work and wanted uh, something to eat, packaged stuff, he'd get it. Of course, Drake's out of the machine. And the profit made from that was to put into a Bill Bonnell fund. And then that could be spent if you could show why you needed it. And I, I needed a lake, I needed a lighter ball field, I needed a skating ring and all that stuff. And I got all that out of that fund. It, could, it wasn't the company, it was the company, but it was in charge of it. Prior to having that, of course, the company got the advantage of the company. As long as I remember, it always had a bill benevolent fund. Were you in charge of payroll? <clears throat> no, uh, only in my mail, but not all the checks were made in the, uh, over in the general office. When did they used to get the pay envelope? I remember that years ago, yeah. I, I, when I was learning, and they took bring me in there to help put the money in the envelope way back yonder. Take me out of the mill if they needed an extra clerk. They, they let me. They, do. Did they pay out the people? When I was told that on Thursdays was payday, right? I don't remember Friday's payday. I don't remember Tuesday. Thursday, no. You said Tuesday. Thursday. 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 We paid off on Friday. Did you? Could you? Southern doesn't emphasize that day. Thursday. Did you? Can you describe that? Um, they gave it to you in an envelope. Outside the no, what, inside. no, what they did, and my wife did a lot of that. What they do, Cole answered, the little envelope that had your money in it, and the outside of it showed how many hours you worked. And had it all, this is his house, it ain't mine. We'll make him go do what we want to do. Anyway, that pay, that pay envelope is about that long, about that wide. And on, on the outside of it, it listed your hours the amount of pay you made, what deductions you have, like house rent, and maybe if you'd borrowed some money from the company to show a deduction that, w that was fed. And what, uh, what else were they? Uh, that was the net amount. And so the, the, the foreman, the overseers, would give out the pay slips. 
each one for the certain worker. And then the, the paymaster will come in there with a box of all the checks, and you give him that slip for the paper, for your money, and he gives you the envelope with the money in it, the statement of what you made. Is that what you want to know? Yeah. But I never remember. I don't see why that would be practical, because you're paid by the week. You're not paid by the month, or not paid by two weeks, anything. I, I, usually, I always think of Friday's grocery day, and that kind of stuff. Um, did there, was there a company store that people bought their groceries from? No, that didn't make it. Now, I had one, I had, after I got to be general superintendent. You were general superintendent in Columbus, right? Yeah, and uh, I was back in Macon, I general superintendent. I had a mill in Reynolds, Georgia, <coughs> and they had Reynolds, Georgia. Reynolds, Georgia. Uh -huh. I know, there used to be a big store down there, and they buy the people could go in there and buy stuff and and charge it to them on the payroll. But I never had that with me. We had a drink stand, we called it. You go there and get coke coals. Now you could go by the the paymaster and get some tokens. What did they call the tokens? Huh? What did they call the tokens? I don't remember having a name, but it, it, you could pay for stuff and it'd be deducted from it. But we never had in making like the, the northern people got the slant that you worked them and you took all their money for what they ate and everything else. But that's not true in ours now. You didn't, uh, you just didn't do that. You could go get something to drink, like you wanted a Coca Cola and a hamburger, or Coca Cola or something. And the ones that would run it, in most cases, were the, these these community uh, groups that have, like the Girl Reserve, go down from in the summer months from say ten to one, something like cook hamburgers, and they'd go by there and pay for it, you know. But we never sold a lot of. I've heard of others that had sold clothing, groceries, and all that, but we never had that. Not in my lifetime. Did you, did you um, dur during that strike? I do what? During in '34, when the strike was on, did you get relief since the company wasn't working? Not that I know of. No. I worked on. I was one. I worked. So did you have to walk through the picket line to get into the office? The, the, our mill, number two mill, never was that extent. You came to work, you may have. Few out there, but nobody, nobody will give me any trouble. I didn't have to do anything for it, cause I knew all the workers. They knew me. And running his job, and uh, he was strong union, and we are friends now. He doesn't work for the company. I see him. He's active in, the, in his particular church, not mine. And uh, I've been to parties with him there. And he, there's, there's no animosity there that I know of. We're friends right on. Well, that's, I guess business is one thing and friendship is another thing. Right? Uh, don't you want to call one of those workers and let's hit, try to see if I can lead you there to them? Yes, sir. Um, only thing that I, I, I will call, yes. Is that, do you think that I could talk to this gentleman that you just mentioned? I don't know how to get in touch with him. He doesn't live in the community. No, uh, oh, he doesn't live in Macon. I, I don't, I, I only have seen him, I bet it's been a year since I've seen him, so. He doesn't come to those parties. I never see him there, whether the uh, Payne City reunion, so to speak. Do they have the reunion? In Payne City? Have a what? Do they have the reunion in Payne City? It's, yeah, it's just it's across. Sir? In your reunion? Oh, yeah. It's, in the uh, it's, it's across the street from the community, and it's in a recreational area that the Bib gave them all that property when they busted up. It's a and, you know, all the playgrounds and everything else, they gave it to them, the lake, all that. And it's, it's a Anybody goes there, not just the paying employees, it's the whole city of them, anybody that comes, black, white, green, and yellow, anything. This man got laid off from the company because of this strike? No, he was discharged. Discharged. 
We didn't have many of them either. We don't have, I'm talking about even without label or with label. We didn't ever have big trouble. So did he have to leave his home? And he, had to leave every, he had to leave his house? He, he had a home away from the Payne City, yeah. And the Southerners just don't, don't like that too much. And so the BIP got out of the ownership of the houses because they didn't want, everybody that was living there had an option of buying the house based on a, a separate appraiser. You know, appraisers, is, uh, he's got to be affiliated with a certain agency to be, you know, the, very, the, the high type man. So it, they were sold real cheaply. And uh, I don't know of any blacks that live there now. And it must have been on. They must own it. Oh, they owned it before I left there. So they've been on it for years. But as far as I know, no blacks have moved in there. So they started buying them in the fifties, in the sixties. I said in the in the low sixties, maybe. And there probably some law went in effect there that you no. couldn't. Are those, are those machines, machines still in the mill? What are you talking about, boy? Are the machines still in the mill? I don't understand you, no. Cole. Are the machines still in the whip mill? What did he say? He wants to know if the weaving machines and the looms We, we don't have any the weaving. Mill. There's no weaving there in that mill. Weaving mill is one that makes the cloth. But we made yarn on packages for utilize some other company. Like making, uh, we make, in Columbus, we made tie cord. And we were the first ones to make the stretch tie cord. Uh, and in Payne City, you made yarn. No, Payne, no, Payne all, this, all the places in Macon were uh, yarn producers. Other mills are cloth, you know, make the fine bed sheeting. Like over in Columbus, we make, uh, we got into the synthetics, you know, make a, but still the best one is our Type 180, I think is the number of it. But it's a, it's a good game, the textile game. You call it a game, how come? I do what? You called it a game. Well, it's, it's a way of life, it's a work. Raise your family. Okay, just so just take. Let's look we'll at this. I went to work. I, I went to work by the, in the company for 1932. And it was the first time you walked into the mill. It was the first, first time, time I had been in the mill. Yes, uh huh. 32. And then I left. I stayed there from 32 to January of 45. January the 15th of 45. So from 32 to 34, you were working. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. and you worked a lot of different jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what job were you working at when you started college? Mm. That was from, um, that's 32 to 45, wasn't it? 32, I graduated from high school. And I didn't go to work. I went to work at, in uh, 32. At, at number two mill. Number two mill. And I, I worked there until 1945 and went to Payne Mill. Okay. And then if I worked at Payne Mill, I'd about 57. And then I, then I, 
transferred to the Portdale Mill and stayed up there just a year and a half. So when you were lived, when you went to Number Two Mill, you were living in big housing. Right? That's right. My mother was working. Okay, and and that's that neighborhood was where? What was that neighborhood called? The Number Two Community. Yeah. Just called Number Two Mill. They didn't have a name like well, Payne Mill was called Payne Mill because the mill was Payne Mill. So that was Payne City. Payne City, yeah. Okay. That clear it up? It does, yes. Mm -hmm. 